Hello everyone, welcome to the last session of the day. And so today we're going to be hearing about equilibrium computation in many different meanings of that term. Uh, so first up we have uh, Bashka, who is going to be talking about competitive equilibrium with chores, uh, combinatorial algorithms, and hardness. Okay. Um, thanks for the introduction. So I'll get started. So. The entire talk would be about competitive equilibrium with BADS, and I guess I would make, I would give you an overview of what are the results I'm gonna present, so don't worry if some of the definitions are not clear, they would become explicit as the talk progresses. So, okay, so competitive equilibrium is like, I mean, at least in this setting, it's one of the, the biggest application is a canonical method to divide divisible items. Um, and why I say canonical, I guess that would also become clear. But before that, let me just say a broad spectrum of problems that we have here. So as I said, so we are in the setting with divisible items. These divisible items can be the ones that can give us utility or the ones that can give us disutility. So the, the ones give utility are usually we call it as goods and the ones giving disutility we call it as chores. And then depending upon the economic model under which we are considering allocation, you have again a broad spectrum of problems. Uh, here I would be considering, say, two fundamental economic models, that is the Fisher model and the exchange model, the latter being a generalization of the former. Um, don't worry if you don't know what these are, I would define them very quickly. But before that I would like to say that most of the results of, say, classical equilibrium computation, also known as market equilibrium computation, is dedicated to the study of, say, goods, like equilibrium computation with goods. And it's not, um, I mean, there are many results which are known, complexity results, but I'm just stating two of them which are, say, meaningful for the purpose of this talk. Uh, there are many desirable structural and computational properties of this equilibrium. So first of all, in both the models, the equilibrium form a convex set, and also there are many strongly polynomial time algorithms known for both of these settings. Some of them are continuous optimization based, some of them are combinatorial, yeah. And for this talk, we would be primarily focusing on competitive equilibrium with BADs, or where agents have disutilities. And this has been relatively understudied, and it has quite recently picked up pace since the seminal work uh, of like Bogomolnoya and others in the context of fair division. Okay, so now let me explain these notions of competitive equilibrium a little bit more formally. As I said, so this is an allocation problem, right? So we have agents, we have divisible chores, and each agent has a disutility function. I mean, in this case, I'm talking about linear disutility functions. And our goal is to find a competitive equilibrium. So uh, just to the left, you have the picture. I mean, pictorial representation of the agents, the chores, and the disutility matrix, as you have. And what is a competitive equilibrium? So competitive equilibrium involves, say, two things. The first thing is prices for the items, which in this case are the chores, and an allocation. So, and what are the properties that the prices and the allocation should satisfy? The first thing is that we want each agent to earn one dollar of money by doing a set of chores that minimizes her disutility. So meaning that if you look at the bundle xi that's being allocated to agent i, xi minimizes di of xi, subject to the earning constraint that this agent needs to earn one dollar of money by doing this set of chores, okay? So this is the first requirement. The second requirement is in this process, all the chores are also completely allocated. Not under allocated or over allocated, but all are completely allocated. Okay, so let's just understand here. So we are trying to come up with prices, let's say for chore one and chore two here, and let's consider these prices where you have one dollar each for both the chores. And it's clear that if I fix the prices, what do the optimum bundles of the agents look like? So look at the objective. It's a, it's a fractional knapsack-like objective, right? It's, an maximize, it's a mi minimization of linear disutility subject to a knapsack-like earning constraint. So it's clear that the agents would be earning $1 of money from chores that have minimum disutility to price ratio. So the optimum bundle of agent one here would be chore one because it's distributed to price ratio is 0.1 while that of chore two is one. So agent one earns one dollar of money by doing all of chore one and agent two earns all one dollar of money by doing all of chore two. So this is a competitive equilibrium in the context of chores. And uh, the first question that you ask is that, well, does competitive equilibrium exist? And it's one of the most uh, foundational results of mathematical economics through fixed point theorems that you can show that yes, indeed, you can find such prices and allocations even under more general disutility functions. 
Uh, but as computer scientists, we are more interested in actually finding such allocations, to which case uh, we talk about the computational aspects, and we'll talk about them later. Um, but as I said, why is this a canonical way? Because, it, it, because CI, at least, competitive equilibrium with equal incomes, gives you many desirable properties of fairness and efficiency, like envy freeness, Pareto optimality, core stability, and many more. And the competitive equilibrium in the exchange model is of generalization. So exchange model is like a barter system where the set of agents exchanges the chores amongst themselves in order to minimize their disutility. So formally, the setup looks very similar. Like you have agents, you have divisible chores, agents have linear disutility functions, but now the agents also have certain endowments. So endowments kind of uh, like is the chores that they bring to the setting. So each, say, agent I brings WIJ units of chore J to the setting. And again, what a competitive equilibrium, the definition is very clear. The only change is in the earning limit of this agent. Earlier we had that every agent earns exactly one dollar of money, and now the earning limit is the total cost of the endowment of the agent. So if an agent brings extremely expensive chores at the market clearing prices, then he has to like earn a lot of money by doing chores. So again, so the bundle XI that is allocated to agent I minimizes its disutility subject to the earning constraint where the earning limit is summation WIJPJ. And in this process, I want the, all the chores to be completed. So in this setting, for instance, if you set, say, oh, I guess I forgot to say at the beginning that in the endowment in this setting, we assume that agent one owns all of chore two and agent two owns all of chore one. In that case, if you fix the prices P1 and P2 for chores, then agent one needs to earn P2 dollars of money and agent two needs to earn P1 dollars of money with respect to their end, uh, endowments. And since it's like uh, disutility minimizing, you would, I mean, you would again have the same set of prices and agent one earns one dollar of money by doing chore one entirely, and agent two earns one dollar of money by doing chore two entirely. And uh, it's a very well-known result that CI is actually a special case of the exchange model where this WIJs, you can set it to be one over N for all ag agents and all chores. Um, okay, so, that being said, so we have two models, a CEI and a more general exchange model. Equilibrium exists, and now we talk about the computational aspects of this equilibrium. And unfortunately, in contrast to the good setting, we neither have any polynomial time algorithms nor any hardness results known. Um, I'll just say, say two, I mean, there are many, there are more results on some special cases, but I just cite, say, two of them here, which are meaningful to the talk. So there is a result by Bransi and Sandor Mirsky that is an enumeration-based algorithm, which kind of enumerates through the set of all feasible competitive, like CI profiles, and it can find all the CI. And this only works when the number of agents or the number of chores is actually constant. So you have polynomially many configurations. And then quite recently, there's an exterior point algorithm by Budagians, myself, and uh, Ruta Mehta, where we give a continuous optimization-based method to compute an approximate competitive equilibrium with equal incomes in polynomial time. I would like, to, um, so before I say like more about our results, I would like to say a few words about why this setting is different compared to the good setting. In particular, the crucial difference is in the structure of the set of competitive equilibrium itself. So in the good setting, all the competitive equilibrium, as I said, form a convex set. In the chore setting, you can have several disconnected co competitive equilibria. So the set of CI can be disconnected, and as a result, it is non-convex. So all usual continuous optimization-based methods that you use in the good setting don't extend, and the combinatorial algorithms also don't extend for different reasons, which would be elaborated in this talk. Okay, so... Um, that being said, let me tell you the main, the, the main results of our paper. So the first thing is that we propose a combinatorial polynomial time algorithm, which again computes an approximate competitive equilibrium. And um, this happens to be faster than the exterior point algorithm, but the main takeaway, I believe, is combinatorial algorithms give you more intuitive dynamics of, say, pricing, I mean, how, you, how to change the prices and how to change the allocation on the rules of demand and supply. So economically, these algorithms are more interesting. And also, these are flow-based algorithms. And given the computer science community's deep understanding of flow-based subroutines, this allows a lot of room for improvement in computation. So these are two advantages that at least I seek in terms of combinatorial algorithms. Um, and another advantage is maybe these, uh, that they, can, they, they are helpful in extending results to a discrete setting. But we'll talk about that absolutely towards the end. So I've been talking about throughout approximate competitive equilibrium with equal income, so let me just formally define it. Um, 
so, in the pro so as you said, competitive equilibrium has two parts, right? Every agent earns a disutility minimizing bundle, and all chores are completely allocated. So you kind of have an approximation on both the conditions. Everyone earns an almost uh, optimal bundle, and the chores are almost completely allocated. So this is an approximate competitive equilibrium with equal incomes. Um, and then, uh, okay, so before I, I wanted to say a few other words that for specific kind of disutilities, our algorithm can find an exact competitive equilibrium in polynomial time. In particular, if the entries of the disutility matrix are rounded, like if it's something like each dij is one plus alpha ij raised to beta ij, where alphas and betas are polynomial, I mean polynomially bounded, uh, I mean in alpha inverse polynomially bounded and betas polynomially bounded, then you, our algorithm finds an exact competitive equilibrium in polynomial time. And as I said, this is already faster than the exterior point algorithm suggested earlier. And I believe that this is, I mean, it's faster than the bound I present in this paper because of the recent breakthrough in max flow results that have, uh, that, that have recently come up. So this paper was written prior to that result. Okay, so that being said, so for the rest, uh, uh, yeah. So the second major result that I would like to say is that we get the exact opposite result for the exchange model. So in the exchange model, computing even an approximate competitive equilibrium is PPAD hard. And we do this through a reduction through the standard normalized polymatrix. We give a polynomial time reduction from the standard normalized polymatrix scheme, which has also been used to pr uh, prove the PPAD hardness of non-monotone markets. And we can show that uh, we can generalize uh, the proof technique in, uh, in that paper. However, the challenge is to work with linear disutilities. Even with linear disutilities, we can show this reduction. So, and to the best of my knowledge, this is the first separation in computational complexity between uh, like comp computing a competitive equilibrium in the CI model and the exchange model, even when agents have linear preferences. Um, okay, so now I will give you a brief overview of the techniques quickly. And for most of the talk, I would be talking about the first result, that is the combinatorial algorithm, because this technique generalizes the result uh, of like non-monotone markets. So I would just present you the new result. Okay, so first I'm gonna give you a high level sketch of combinatorial algorithms used in the good setting. And then we will try to naturally generalize these algorithms in the chore setting and we would see what are the consequences, I mean what are the, what are the, what are the consequences of that and what are the pitfalls we, uh, we observe and how we overcome these pitfalls through a different analysis. And this analysis would also hold for the good setting, okay? So, okay, so let's get started. So first I wanna start with a flow-based formulation for competitive equilibrium with equal incomes. So for this, a crucial tool is the bank, maximum bank per buck network. So what is a maximum bank per buck network? Given a particular price vector, I define a flow network which comprises of the source, the set of agents, the set of goods, and the sink. And I draw edges from the source to the agents of capacity one and from the goods to the sink of capacity, the price of the good. And I draw edges from the agents to the goods if they happen to be bank per buck edges, meaning that these are the edges which have, like these are the goods which have maximum utility to price ratio. So in an optimum bundle, the agent should only consume the goods along these edges. And these edges have infinite capacity. So what is an alternate statement of finding a competitive equilibrium? Our goal is to find a price vector such that the maximum flow in the bank per buck network is n. It saturates all the ed edges from the source to the agents, or equivalently, all the edges from the goods to the sink. This is a, this is a formulation that I'm gonna work with. Okay, so how is this done? It's a very intuitive update rule, the Walrussian update rule, which basically says we just need to increase the prices of the goods in demand and find a balanced allocation. So what, what does this exactly mean? So given a bank per buck, you fix a, fix a price and given a maximum bank per buck network, we find a balanced allocation. Basically this is a flow which balances the surplus of budgets remaining at the agents. So if you look, an agent is supposed to, in the good setting, spend one dollar of money. So you look at how much money the agent still remains. So that's what I call a surplus. You look at the L2 norm of the surpluses, anything which minimizes the L2 norm or equivalently balances the surpluses of the agent is what I call a balanced flow. And once you fix a balanced flow, you can recover a balanced allocation. So that's the balanced allocation. And what are the goods in demand? Well, look at the agents who have the highest surplus. This is the set S. 
These are the agents who have too much money, they want to spend, but the goods are completely sold, so they are unable to spend. So these are the goods where demand exceeds supply. So these are the goods in demand, the neighborhood of the goods of, uh, neighborhood of S in the bank per buck network. So let's see what happens. So let's say in this figure, agents one, two, three are our agents with high surplus. And um, these are the, uh, like, uh, yeah, and G2, G3, G4 are the goods in demand. So the intuitive thing to do right now is to increase the prices of the goods in demand. But to what point? So what are the good things that happen when I increase the price of the goods in demand? So first of all, I want the agents to spend more. So when you're increasing the price of the goods in demand, the agents are spending more. Although their consumption is the same, they're actually spending more, and their surpluses is reducing, which is exactly what I want. And they can get interested in goods outside. So this, um, so yeah, so we stop either when a new edge appears or when the surplus of one agent from the top, like the top surplus agent, equals the surplus of the agents at the bottom. Either ways, the L2 norm of the surpluses decreases. And this is roughly the analysis. I mean, a clever analysis of, the, of this will give you different running times, and most of the procedures have a high, similar high-level structure. So let's say we want to generalize this for the chore setting, where we analogously define the minimum pain per buck network. I mean, same network, only instead of like maximum utility to price ratio, we have minimum disutility to price ratio edges. And we have the same problem. OK, so and now we do the intuitive wall Russian thing, where we decrease the prices of the chores in demand. I mean, balanced allocation, chores in demand follows a similar definition to the good setting. So let's say that A1, A2, A3 are the agents with high surplus. So these agents are the agents who still need to earn more money from the chores C2, C3, C4. So for, but now I need to decrease the prices of these chores in which sense I'm kind of increasing the surpluses of these agents because I'm increasing the amount of money that they still need to earn. So what's happening is that the L2, no, sorry. What's happening is that the L2 norm of the surpluses is diverging. And this is the fundamental bottleneck for generalizing the combinatorial algorithms. So what is the fix? The fix is very simple. We come up with an alternate potential. So the major bottleneck is we are using potentials which are price dependent. So if we can have a potential which is price independent, then perhaps, uh, and which can improve during an allocation update instead of a price update, then perhaps we can make progress, and that's exactly what we do. So potential is a product of disutilities. And again, let's do the same thing. Identify the agents with high surplus, look at the chores in demand, decrease their prices. So when you're decreasing their prices, I mean, notice that the allocation is still unchanged. The money might change, but the allocation is still unchanged, as a result of which the product of disutilities our, um, uh, yeah, our potential remains unchanged. However, the moment we get a new bank, uh, we, we, we get a new edge from say A3 to C5, then we can kind of improve our potential. Why so? Well, I claim that we can improve the product of disutilities of agent three and agent four. Why? Because well, since agents are consuming along their minimum pain per buck edges, I can write this product of disutilities as product of their minimum pain per buck times product of their outflows, right? So D3 of X3 is MPB of three times outflow of three, and D4 of X4 is MPB of four times outflow of four, and I just separate these two. And now, since I have an MPB edge, I can kind of balance outflow of three times outflow of four. And while balancing this would increase our potential. So I push more, like I make agent three earn more money from C5, and I push back like some flow from A4 to C5. So I balance the outflows as a result of which our potential still increases. You can notice that this analysis, I mean, this kind of a convergence analysis also works in the good setting. So it's kind of a, so perhaps this is the better potential to look at because this kind of gives you results on both the settings. Okay, so that's more or less uh, what I had to say. So what we claim is that when there is, when there is a big difference in outflows or big difference in earnings, then we can always find an improvement by a factor of one plus epsilon squared over 16 times n squared. And this gives us the desired running time for the combinatorial algorithm. And uh, the major two future directions that come out of the work is primarily to, I guess, settle the complexity of finding the exact competitive equilibrium with equal incomes. And also, I mean, can we generalize this to get, say, fair and efficient uh, allocations in the discrete setting. I mean, this is one of the open problems. Can this analysis help in settling that problem? So that's more or less what I wanted to cover. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, so I think we have time for maybe one quick question. Yeah, uh, so the potential is too short. Isn't it because everything for the similar nine shares is not 
It is nice. It is nice for choice. It is really hard. It is not easy to choose. Like, it's not easy to Yeah, yeah, that, 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 is, that is true, but... Um, I mean, we believe that most likely it is PPD complete, yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you again. Okay.